Join me, Phil Stephanie and Russell Gerber on an interactive show designed to give you more insight and context to all things African. And today's show, we'll be going through the much maligned bad boys of Africa, the hyenas of Africa. My name is Russell Gerber, folks, and welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Mr. Phil Stephanie still off gallivanting in the bush, so I'm still on my own. So make sure you get those questions to us so we have something to discuss today. But we're doing one of the most misunderstood animals here in Africa. And we'll be focusing on the spotted hyena. Touching on its less known cousin, the brown hyena, but we'll move on to that towards the end of the show. As always, folks, make sure that you're registered if you do want to ask any questions. So send those through whenever you have something on your mind, and I'll try to get through them as much as possible today. So without further ado, the spotted hyena, the scientific name is actually Crocata crocata, which actually suggests to you that they're very much on their own. There is no other animal in the same family. There are actually only four species of hyena, really, in, in Africa. The striped hyena, brown hyena, spotted hyena, which we'll be focusing on today, and then the aardvorf, which is significantly smaller, of course. But hyenas are very high up on the predator hierarchy. We touched on that a few weeks ago on one of our on-point shows, the predators of Africa. Hyenas are basically second in line, but in many places, they actually are the dominant predator in, uh, in the wild. This is a lovely clip, which I'm sure many of you have seen, up close and personal look at what is actually a really cute face when you get it up close. <laughs> Often considered one of the less good-looking animals of the bush. Some people even put them in the ugly fire, which I find highly offensive to the poor hyena. They are actually incredible species. As I mentioned, they are one of the bigger predators here in Africa, uh, the females being significantly bigger. Um, they actually produce quite a lot of testosterone, which creates a bigger body size. And they can weigh up to around 80 kilograms, averaging about 10 kilograms heavier than the males. They've evolved pretty much on their own, somewhere in between the cats and the dogs. So they actually belong to neither group. And when they were first discovered here in Africa, they were actually considered to be closely related to bears. And that's why it, very often we refer to the youngsters as cubs and not pups. We do, of course, have a lot of similarities in looks to dogs, but they are, as I mentioned, actually all alone in their own family. They're widely distributed for, throughout Southern Africa and actually used to be we used to occur all the way up into Europe as the Eurasian hyena, um, which we think was actually the same species. They were, of course, wiped out over the years with the growth of population across the continent and into Europe. So now are pretty much reserved to wildlife preserve areas or national parks. And of course, some areas where there are no fences between the bush and the urban areas, there is some overlap with them there as well. They're actually really long lived as well. Some hyenas can have been recorded to living up to 40 years uh, in captivity, but around about 20 years or so um, in the wild, which is very long for a predator or a mammalian predator. This was a nice clip that I wanted to show you folks of what looks to be a pregnant female. And it's something we wanted to touch on early on in the show. The 
females really are top of the pops when it comes to hyenas. They are matriarchal societies. Which means, of course, that the females are dominant. And in the hyena clan, every female is more dominant than the highest ranking male. So every time a cub is born, they actually will be higher up in the hierarchy than the highest ranking male. male. And for the most part, the clans are made up of nomadic males, which will stick around with the clan for a, well, varying times, really. They can move on at any time. But for the most part, the core will be made up of the females themselves. What's very difficult to tell, though, between male and female hyenas is, of course, sexing them. And that's because of a interesting appendage on the female, because of that increased uh, testosterone and also just an evolutionary trait, which we think may have come from the fact that males in the past were thought to be more aggressive uh, and were less likely to be attacked. In any case, the females developed the, a, what we call a pseudo penis and scrotum which is why it's hard to actually tell the male and female apart. Having said that, the clans are actually very tight. There is a lot of social bonding within the group, as you can see here. In this little clip, you've got the one laying down, which is showing clear submission or submissive behavior to the bigger female, it looks like in this particular clip which is, of course, pretty typical in what we were discussing earlier when it comes to the social structures of hyena clans. What I find so interesting about hyenas is that they often get treated as almost these scary and almost evil animals, I suppose you could say, but the amazing thing about them is they're incredible in terms of caring for their cubs. The entire clan plays a role in looking after the cubs, and will put a lot of energy into raising the cubs. Normally two or three little jet black pups born to a single female. Gestation is around 110 days or so. But uh, the milk of the female is actually highly, highly nutritious. So much so that they don't even need to wean the pups for sometimes even up to a year. Uh, they pup the, the cubs will actually suckle on the on the female and any other lactating female throughout that year without having to get any form of meat um, until they're over a year old. And here another clip which we're going to get into in a moment is, of course, you most often see hyenas in small groups, um, what we call a clan. Um, but for the most part, it will be two or three animals. A clan can be anywhere up to 80, even at 90 individuals. But it's very seldom you would see that many together. They spread out quite far and into different groups. If you listen carefully here. one of the most iconic sounds in the African bush, and that is that whoop or the howl of the hyena. And just like wolves, it's a way that they will do a long-distance contact calling to the rest of the clan. Um, as I mentioned, they tend to be in small groups and not often together. It's what we call a fusion and fission society. So sometimes they'll come together, um, potentially if there is a den, or if there is a big, fresh kill and there happen to be a number of individuals in the area. This whooping call that we just heard now tends to be the more common call, unlike what they're famous for, that laughing call. Many people refer to the species of hyena as the laughing hyena. But that little laugh is actually often a sign of anxiety. And generally when they're tense, if they come across a kill with lions on it where they're looking to scavenge, or if they're trying to get reinforcements to help them, 
that's generally when you'll get that little laugh that is so famous for the hyena. When it comes to hunting, they will cover large territories in some areas up to 600 kilometers, if you can believe that, um, in very dry areas like the Kalahari. As I mentioned, the spotted hyena are quite widespread. Um, they tend to occur all over sub-Saharan Africa and, as I mentioned, all the way up into northern Africa. So they're highly adaptive and can survive in most environments, but prefer to be in savanna environments when there is, where there is a decent amount of food available to them. You can see here, this is an early morning little clip that we took to show you a lovely group of them, little clan of hyenas, before or at the end of a night of hunting. So this would be early morning, and generally in the day, they will rest up and find a spot to sleep, generally in the shade, out of sight. And will avoid hunting during the day. Um, what we haven't touched on yet is, of course, hyenas are often considered really great scavengers, but often underestimated as hunters themselves. They're extremely powerful, both in their body, their size, and their jaws, of course, which have extremely powerful muscles on the sides, allowing them to bite and shear through even a shin bone of three or four inches, um, which allows them to get at the nutrition inside um, of the bone marrow, which, of course, many other scavengers are unable to do, and other predators are unable to do. But... When hunting animals, they are actually highly adaptable. And we chatted a little bit about that yesterday. They tend to chase them down over long distances. And when they do hunt, they actually are quite successful. In some areas of Africa, it's actually shown from studies that it's more likely that lions will actually scavenge from hyenas than the other way around. Now, that is not always the case and differs from region to region. But it gives you an idea of the success of hunting of the species that many people don't actually consider when looking at these animals. And whatever reason that might be, whether it's from the bad reputation they got from Disney's Lion King many years ago, they actually are prolific predators and powerful, powerful animals in the hierarchy of predators in Africa. As I mentioned, they tend to be more crepuscular or nocturnal, operating in the early morning, early evening, or, or overnight. Um, when it's cooler, and they also have an advantage over their prey species, they have excellent vision and, of course, amazing hearing and sense of smell, which allows them to track species. And with the clan, they will spread out over large distances to cover as much area as possible. If they find something interesting, or if there is a hunt on, or if they come across a kill that they're looking to scavenge, they will do that famous laugh to call reinforcements and actually then often chase big predators, small predators off of a kill where they can actually get in and feed on that kill on their own. They tend to go for medium or large prey when they are hunting. Of course, it depends on the size of the clan. Um, if you have a lot of mouths to feed, then you tend to have to go for bigger animals where you get more reward for taking them down. And in some areas, clans of hyenas have been known to take down animals as big as buffalo, even small giraffe, if you can believe that. And again, reinforces this idea of what amazing hunters they are. If you look at this little clip, you see this individual near the front walking on the left has got a big bone in its mouth. It looks like the shin bone of an antelope species. And as I mentioned, the great advantage for them is that they're able to actually break into those bones and get at the marrow inside, which is a big advantage over many other species. So don't let anyone ever tell you that hyenas aren't significant and prolific hunters. After today, you'll be able to say that not only are they 
misunderstood and wonderful parents. They actually are very capable of taking animals down on their own. And though they are very close, more often than not, as I say, you'll see them on their own to cover as much area as possible. And what I will say about them from a personal point of view is they, when they do scavenge or take down an animal, they're not as clean or good at self-cleaning and preening as to the feline counterparts, the lions and leopard. So they tend to have a more pungent smell if you're ever lucky enough to be close to one, hopefully in a vehicle and not on foot. So often you can smell them, particularly if you're downwind. And much like the other predators in Africa, when they are actually hunting, they will more often than not walk into the wind so as not to be detected by prey species. In this little clip, you can see this hyena not interested at all in taking on any of these impala. And you would notice also no alarm call from the impala too. So a lone hyena like this would not really give them any pause. And as I mentioned, in certain areas, they would hunt less than in others. So the local species will become more adapted and more understanding of the threat depending on the behaviors of the local clans of hyenas. We had a question from Warthog who asked, is it common for hyenas to hide their kill or scavenged meal in water for later consumption? It's a great question, Warthog, and yes, they do do that. Um, often to help break down the meat as well, it's considered a potential reason for them doing that. Um, but for the most part, they tend to, it, it tends to be an easy place to hide it so that other animals can't smell and actually get the, the, the kill itself. So it's not an uncommon behavior. And in fact, it's something I've seen quite often. We've got a clip coming up later that I'll show you. So I hope that answers your question. In this amazing little video, we hopefully help hopefully help me answer a question from Stephanie of do packs of hyena ever take down a hippo or elephant I didn't think hyena would go near them but I've seen the video highlights of them going up close to these larger animals so if you look in this particular clip these two hyenas are very interested in this particular hippo and though that hippo is not too threatened by them You'll see in a moment, he certainly does react to them getting a little bit too close. This looks like a male hippo. And these hyenas are always going to try their luck. So they are extremely opportunistic. And though in this particular video, I'll let it play out for you and you'll see what happens. I have actually, on my own, witnessed hyenas taking down a fully grown young male hippo, uh, a group of about 30 of them. That hippo was injured the night before in a fight with another male, um, and a group, a small group of the clan came across this hippo and called in their reinforcements, and though it was extremely gruesome to watch, they did eventually take down that massive, massive um, prey species, which is extremely rare to see, but it again reinforces the idea of what powerful hunters they can be when they need to be or when the opportunity arises. So it's definitely, it's less likely to happen, but it does happen from time to time. And again, if they have the opportunity, if they see a chance to do so, they will often take that opportunity. brings us on to our next topic that we need to discuss, and that is, of course, the threats to hyenas. Watch here, this hippo has had enough of these two. In just a moment, he gives them a little chase. So I just wanted to see if it comes up now. <laughs> I 
And there you go. Now, they're very quick at weighing up a threat, of course. It's one of the big advantages that hyenas have, too. They're extremely intelligent, as many people don't realize. So they will often try their luck and see and work out a threat of a prey species or, of course, any other predator that might be a threat to them. In this clip, it's difficult to see, but there is actually a leopard near the front right of the picture. And in that particular instance, it just highlights the point that you will often have hyena following close by other predators like leopard, like lion, um, even wild dogs, where they will grab the opportunity of any potential kill that they can steal from an individual. But that is, of course, a big risk for them. There is always the opportunity that they will be taken out by lions if they get caught in the wrong place. The lions are one-on-one, -on -one, much more powerful than a hyena. Even the lionesses. Um, but for the most part, they will be able to overpower a single leopard, even a male leopard. But at the same time, it is always a risk. And one of the biggest risks to hyenas are the other big predators, particularly lions, and certainly to their cubs. So if the den is discovered, they will then move the den and the cubs to a different area so as to avoid the predation of their cubs by lions in particular. But any other of those predators that I mentioned, if they do come across the cubs on their own, they will kill them to eliminate the competition. Most of the time they won't eat them, but it tends to be just their control over the competition of other predators in the area. In this little clip, of course, we've got two jackals. The other one's moved off screen now. And that is another scavenger that they have to contend with. Of course, they are much more powerful than the jackals. But the jackals are super fast and can sneak in to grab a piece at any time. And it's something that hyenas have to be aware of all the time, um, particularly if they are feeding on the scraps of a kill that is a few days old. There's not a lot of nutrition left, so they don't want to share as much as they can avoid it. In this little clip, which I'm sure many of you have seen, if you've been with us for the last year or so, is a great clip just to show the inquisitiveness and opportunistic nature of hyenas. Now, now, that inquisitive nature can also be really dangerous for them. These two thought it would be a good idea to investigate a crocodile. Now, albeit a smaller crocodile, they do get significantly bigger than this. But what I wanted to show you in this clip in particular is you can see the, the tail stand up whenever there is any kind of anxiety that black tail puffs up and they lift it up to make themselves look as intimidating as possible. They also have hairs on the back of their neck that stand up, much like your animals at home, both the cats and dogs. As you can see now, they've figured out that the business end of this crocodile is facing them, and they're much more cautious. And it's likely that these were younger male hyenas, trying their luck and seeing what opportunity they might be in this particular instance. Now, for the most part, the interaction with crocodile and hyena is very limited, which is why this is such a great video. But one of the threats to them, of course, is predation by crocodile. Uh, when they are drinking in the water, and often hyena also like to wallow in the water, if they're not paying attention, a big crocodile could certainly take down an adult um, hyena. And it is another threat that they have to consider out in the wild. A really cool video and something we've showed you folks in the past, but not something we see every day. So it's actually quite a special one for us.
Well, don't forget to keep those questions coming in, folks, if you've got anything on your mind. Hopefully by the end of today, I would have changed your mind on the hyenas and their bad reputation. A really, really enjoyable interaction between the two species, two of Africa's most dominant predator species. Whenever I watch this clip, I always am amazed at how long these two kept going for this crocodile, despite all the warnings in <laughs> that were coming for them. Another major threat for them, of course, that we've also seen in hyenas is porcupine. Similarly to lions, they're often inquisitive about them. can often end up with a couple of quills in the face, which of course is very difficult for them to remove. And they can sometimes get infected and be fatal to a hyena. We got a question from Suki as well. Can they see well at night? In that video, you, could, you of course can see their glowing eyes and remind you that those night cameras, there's no light at all. So that is simply a reflection from the light they're collecting from the moon and stars. They do have well adapted, adapted to Petan lucida, which is that membrane behind the retina. It just helps to reflect more light onto their eyes. So once again, it gives them a slight advantage of prey species or over prey species at night. Well, the cats can see a little bit better than them uh, at night. They do actually have more rods in their eyes than the hyenas. They still are highly adapted to seeing in the dark. So between the eyes, the ears and the nose, They can pick up any potential meal from a long distance away. Another scavenger they always have to worry about, of course, is vultures. In that particular clip was all the white-backed vultures, but they're much more powerful. You can always fight them off, but you often see them together. Before we head out today, we've got to touch on, of course, the less popular cousin, <laughs> or the unpopular cousin, the brown hyenas, we do see them on our cameras from time to time and they're much less common to see. The spotted hyena is considered least concerned when it comes to the IUCN red list. Whereas the brown hyena is actually considered near threatened. They were once widely spread across Southern Africa as well, but to these days are more reserved to the drier regions mostly around the Kalahari and western part of South Africa. And though you tend to see them more on their own, they forage on their own much more than the spotted hyenas, they do actually also have loose clan uh, structures, sometimes up to 10, 15 individuals that will actually come together and help care for the cubs. But after that, they will then move apart again and forage on their own. So they're much more loose in terms of their social structures. And unlike the spotted hyena, the males are a little bit bigger than the females. As you can see, they're pretty easy to tell apart, though they both have these big sloping backs. Spotted hyena, of course, is spotted throughout the body. Brown hyena, much more shaggy, almost like a African werewolf, as it were. But a uh, special sighting, and again, we tend to see them more in the cameras as we get into the winter months.
So now the question is, where to from here for the hyena? Of course, like all the animals that we've discussed over the past few shows, the main threat to them is the interaction with humans. And as I mentioned earlier, the predominant populations are within protected areas in Africa. And in order to keep them a viable population, the only way to do that is to keep these protected areas going. So by coming to visit here at Africa, getting involved in your favorite conservation programs, or of course just joining us here in Africa and helping to spread the word of now, hopefully your mind's being changed to what wonderful animals hyenas are. A long way in protecting the hyena species here in Africa. So folks, looks like that's about it for today. I don't see any more questions, but thank you for your interaction. Thanks for sending through those questions. It's always a pleasure to have your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed our On Point show on hyenas today. Of course, it will go up onto the website where you can view it anytime. All you have to do is register as a premium member and you can do so. So thank you for joining us. It's been my pleasure. And we'll see you all next week for our On Point show on wild dogs. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Thank you all and have a wonderful rest of your day. Cheers for now.